Be Yeezy 350 Zebra. In my opinion, the most iconic Yeezy shoe, the most iconic Yeezy silhouette, the iconic Yeezy colorway. The shoe that's getting a restock on April 9th. Is it worth the hype? Is it worth your money? Let's answer that question in today's video. Yeezy gang, I'm talking to you. If you're a fan of sneakers, streetwear, and black culture, be sure to subscribe to the channel and check out some of my other videos about Yeezys. I'll leave a playlist in the description box down below. Be sure to check it out. It'll definitely help you out with making your sneaker decisions. But without any further ado, let's talk about the build of this 350. Now, the 350 is easily one of the most recognizable shoes in the Yeezy lineup. All right, guys, everybody knows that this is the shoe that started the brand, the Yeezy 350. This is the V2 version. It's not the original one that came out in 2015. However, the shoe still has some hype. It was originally released back in 2017, and the design still holds up to this day. So when you look at the top of the shoe, you're gonna see a prime knit upper. The shoe is made of a variety of woven materials. It feels very nice to the touch. You can see the black and white knitting, hence the zebra name. And along the side of the shoe, you're gonna see the iconic Supply 350. Yes, it's supposed to be backwards on both shoes. Don't be alarmed when you see the backwards 350. It's not a rep, this is legit, all pairs have this. So along the side of the shoe, there's a white stripe. Similar to most 350s, they always have that colorful strap on the side. In this shoe's case, it's white. On the back, you have your pull tab. This will help you get your foot inside the shoe. White laces, and on the heel, you'll see that reflective 3M stripe. On the midsole, you do have a white boost midsole, very comfortable on the feet. And at the bottom, you have more of that boost midsole. You can really see it here. Very comfortable, very durable, very strong. The main three colors of the shoe are definitely gonna be black, white, and red and it adds some versatility when combining it with certain outfits. So with the build of the shoe out of the way, let's start talking about pricing the shoe. Now, I paid $225 for my shoe. I got a used pair off GOAT. It came with a box, no rips, no tears, and a slightly used sole. On average, most new pairs of shoes are going for about $400. I anticipate with the upcoming restock, that price will drop around $350. My recommendation, if you're going for the shoe on the resale market, try to get used pairs. I really don't think it's worth it to get an entirely new pair of the shoe. Although, the new pairs are going to remedy an issue with the shoe, which I'm going to talk about in my dislike section, so be sure to stay tuned for that. However, in my opinion, the shoe really shouldn't be priced at no more than $250, especially with a retail price of $230. I highly recommend that you look toward the used options if you can't get the retail. So let me get straight to it and talk about the things I do not like about my Zebra 350. And these are things to consider for yourself, depending on where you're at in your shoe collection. I always try to make sure when I talk about my likes and dislikes, I think of the average collector. I'm not somebody that has a lot of money. I'm a working person, just like you. I can't get everything in the world. Let's start off with the most obvious disadvantage of having a white shoe. And that is the fact that this shoe is going to be a dirt magnet. I find myself cleaning this shoe about every two weeks now. I have about 10 plus pair of the Yeezys in my collection. So this doesn't get worn as much as it used to when it was my first shoe. However, even with subtle wear, I'm talking maybe once or twice every week or so, the shoe really does need a cleaning at least every month. You're gonna see that the, the side where it says that supply 350, it'll start to turn a little brown. The whites won't be as vibrant over time. and. The dirt can kind of seep into the shoe and you're gonna really have to take the laces out, wash it, take the laces, put them in some type of solution and let it soak. Like the shoe does require a good amount of maintenance. And God forbid, if somebody steps on your 350s, punch them, square in the jaw. <laughs> no, 
I'm not advocate for violence, but for real, if somebody were to step on your 350s, you will literally see a dirt imprint on the side of the shoe. And it's almost like no matter how much you wash it, you can kind of still see the impact of where they stepped on it in the holes. Cause there's like, like mesh holes underneath the shoe and when some type of impact happens, it kind of forces those holes to be visible through the white lining and it's super annoying. If you're gonna get this, be prepared to clean it very, very often. On top of that, the Boost midsole also will collect dirt over time. You can kind of see it, especially if you're walking in a lot of dirty environments, that the, the lines on the midsole, they're kind of, they will kind of trap dirt in between them and your shoes will look a little bit more dingy over time. This is something that can be easily fixed with like a wipe or something, but it's something to keep in mind when you have the shoe that Dirt can easily collect through these crevices and cleaning is a must. If you don't know how to clean these shoes, you gotta learn how to because I feel like if you're not on top of your cleaning regimen, these shoes will degrade much faster compared to like an MXO or Waver. Another disadvantage of having the shoe is that the midsole will yellow over time. Now, like I said, I got mine used, so I really didn't see this effect. But if you look at some of the newer pairs, the midsole is like a, a vibrant white, like bone white. Now mine, it still can fit in that white category, but you can see that there's some aging on the shoe, which, you know, it makes it look vintage. I mean, depending on how you view this, it doesn't bother me because it just matches with the build quality of the shoe. I'm not perturbed by it. It's still a great shoe. However, it's like you make uh, $230 investment in something and then over time you kind of see it yellow more and more because of the sun rays and exposures to light. The good news is that the pairs that are releasing later this week have remedied this issue and the yellowing of the midsole is no longer a problem. The only problem is that if you're buying this on the resale market you can't control whether you're getting this new 2022 pair or the older 2017 pair. It's just the name of the game. So Keep that in mind if you're buying these shoes for resale, you could get the older models that do have that yellowing issue. And my final critique of the shoe is the fact that it's not a pure white shoe. Obviously, it has a zebra pattern, it has the red on the side, but think about how you match your outfits and how you combine your outfits. Air Force Ones are as popular as they are because they're so easy to match with any outfit. It's an all white shoe. Although I would describe this shoe primarily as a white shoe, it just doesn't fit in that same category of versatility as an Air Force or a Stan Smith or even another counterpart of the Easy Family like a 700 Static. These shoes can look a little awkward with certain outfits because of the black stripes. I find it when I'm wearing certain white shirts that the zebra pattern will clash with the white on the shirt because of the black stripes. It's kind of a statement piece with a lot of outfits and it can sometimes fight with other pieces in your outfit for attention and they can ultimately not be as versatile as a all white shoe. So if you're expecting this to be your white shoe in your collection, don't go in with that mentality. It's a zebra design. Look towards matching it with black and red. I really wanted to focus on it being that all white Air Force. But don't get it twisted guys. Just because I have a little bit of critiques on the zebra does not mean I do not like the shoe. There are plenty of things to enjoy about the shoe. In contrast with my last statement, this shoe is a very versatile shoe now. It may not be the all white Air Force, but trust me, out of all the 350s that I own, this is easily the most versatile, guys. As long as you're looking to match with the patterns on the shoe, the black and the white, the red on the side, you can really find a lot of fits to wear it. Me personally, I like graphic tees, so earlier when I made that statement about the all white versatility, I was really thinking of things that didn't really match the colors on the shirt. If I'm wearing a white shirt with some green graphics on it, for example, and I'm trying to match it with this, the green graphics on the shirt aren't gonna go as well with the red on the 350. However, if you're wearing a white shirt with red graphics, it goes great because it has that Supply 350 on the side. 
So that's what I mean by matching it to the colors within the shoe. You gotta think about what's on the zebra to match it with other things. The shoe can go with a lot of fits, guys. As long as your tops have some colors or your bottoms have some colors, the shoe can really, really, really pop off with certain outfits. It is a statement piece. It is an iconic 350. People are gonna know what's on your feet. So try to make sure when you're doing this that the shoes are what's selling your outfit. I really do love the design of the Zebra. It is just a beautiful shoe to look at overall. The, the stripes, the knitting, it's just a work of art. And they're extremely comfortable. That boost midsole, the first time you put your feet in there, it's like, wow. I do not care what shoes you have worn in the past. Nothing compares to the feel of the boost midsole on this 350. It is amazing. Now, it doesn't provide foam runner levels of comfort, but trust me, your feet will be supported in this shoe. Like, so much so that I could argue that this is a great running shoe. Now, would I recommend you run in these shoes? Absolutely not, but that shows how much art support it provides for your feet. Now, me personally, I have very flat feet. So shoes need to have a lot of art support. They need to support my heel to make sure I don't feel like I'm tearing my foot when I walk. These shoes definitely provide that level of comfort. You're not going to be disappointed. If you can, go half a size up. But if that's not an option, go in true size doesn't hurt too. My true size is an 11. I got these in an 11 and I have no complaints as far as comfort goes. And no shade to Jordan fans out there, but these shoes don't crease at all. Nothing. No creases, nothing at all. You might have to look out for like tears and nicks on the prime knit, but if you're not wearing these in a lot of aggressive environments like the club or construction, you don't have to worry about these getting torn up at all. As long as you clean these diligently and frequently, these shoes will retain their value over time. They are a great looking shoe and a great addition to any collection. And on top of that, I think the pricing for this shoe is very fair. For a shoe that was released in 2017, it has had a lot of restocks. I think nine as of April 9th, but I could be wrong. However, the shoe has maintained a very fair price in the resale market. As long as you are going for new pairs for $400, I think $225 is a very fair price for these shoes for a used pair. As long as you're making sure that they're well taken care of, look out for like rips and tears on the sole of the shoe because a lot of times people will rip the bottom because they beat these shoes to death. You can really walk away with a fair price, you know what I mean? Like something that's like new, B plus grade condition. I really don't feel like I got ripped off when I got these shoes. I paid a fair price for them. All in all, I really think this is a great shoe for everybody. Whether you're starting out your collection or you're well established into your collection, the Zebra 350 will have a solid place in your shoe catalog. But now with my likes and dislikes out of the way, let's go into a styling section of the video and show you guys how these shoes look on the feet. And if you're interested in how I personally style these shoes, check out next week's video. I'm gonna give you guys a complete styling guide on the Yeezy 350 Zebra. All right, so for the first fit, you know I had to go with the certified lover boy. Girls among girls, where I'm from, but I will put this on the Bible. This shirt with this pants and these shoes, complete fire. You see how I match the red with the red on the Supply 350. Nice, solid black bottoms to match with the black stripes. And the colors and the girls on the shirt go pretty hard. I mean, it sounds like a fair trade to me because the colors add drip. It's very vibrant, very popping, but also simple and clean. The shoes are the statement, the accessories pop off. Love it. Next fit, you gotta go with the classic Dragon Ball Z, one of the greatest animes of all time. You see how colors can really shine with these shoes. Even though there's a zebra pattern on them, you know, other artworks can really pop off this fit. The red pants go with the red 350s. The sign on the Dragon Ball Z is red, that also goes with that. You can see how there's a definite switch up here. It goes from dark, mid and really light at the bottom the zebras are versatile guys look at this next fit had to do well on the chest field black and white for the zebras got one of the greatest anime of all time yu Hakusho. you can see how there's really no matching with this fit there are all sorts of colors and it still goes well i love the yellow top the yellow top adds a lot of bright vibrant colors the blue blends in with the white on the shoes and it just shows that you don't have to be so matchy matchy whenever you're putting these shoes on you have a lot of 
options when it comes to the zebras, and you have to really exercise those when it comes to that. You always don't have to match the team. So what's the final verdict on these shoes? Buy them if you want them. These are a great pair of shoes, especially with a restock coming up. This is the best time to get them. The price is going to be even lower than what they are now. If you want the 350 Zebra, go ahead and get these shoes. This is how I started my collection. I knew I wanted these because they're such an iconic pair and they're so versatile. I, I, I could go on for days how much I love these shoes. And even though I'm 10 plus shoes into the easy game, I still go back and wear these just because of how beautiful they are. And I know if you got a pair, you're gonna love them too, guys. Very fair pricing, around $200, $250 is probably the most I would pay for the shoes. Despite all the drawbacks that I did mention earlier in the video, if I knew all that before I got the shoe, I would still have gotten the shoe. Trust me, you won't be disappointed. Most of the issues with the shoe can easily be fixed with some research, with other shoes, it's still, honestly, if I had to rate it, if we're doing a rating scale, like that means anything, nine out of 10. I really think these shoes are worth your money. So let me know what you guys think about the 350 Zebra down in the comment section below. Are you going for the upcoming restock on April 9th? Do you already have these shoes? And also let me know down below, what is your favorite pair of 350s? This one is easily one of my top threes. I wouldn't even go as far as saying this is my favorite, but let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Be sure to subscribe if you're interested in more sneaker content, things pertaining to black culture and streetwear and fashion. I appreciate you for watching the video and I hope you continue to have a blessed day and make promising decisions. Peace.